Hello and welcome back to another Omni Heroes video. So today in this video I'm just going to go through the unit Solomon, uh, old reliable as I used to call him. Um, he was a very good uh, partner in early to mid game for uh, Sal who is uh, still to this day one of my favourite units. Um, so let's just have a look at his kit. So first of all we'll go through synergy. So he is an Avenger. Uh, which just means that the more uh, enemy, so the more that your allies die, uh, the stronger that your team will become. Um, he's part of the Shadow Arcs, which is all about increasing dodge rate, um, and also 50% chance to increase attack by 20% when they do die. Uh, and then finally, uh, increases attack of all allies because he's a striker. Um, so if you have uh, two, It'll increase synergy mates. If you have three, it'll increase all allies by 25%. So just something to keep in mind if you are going to be building uh, with Solomon here. Best to get him up to eight stars to get that striker's synergy. Uh, so his first attack, uh, Solomon lifts the cross and smashes it to the ground, dealing 245% physical damage um, to four random enemies and has a 33% base chance to apply taunt. Um, which is uh, it's, it's a good ability and it does stall the enemies. Unfortunately, it is only a 33% ch uh, chance to apply that taunt. So just something to keep in mind. He's not always going to um, get that taunt and it's not particularly reliable. The next ability, the Despair Anchor, uh, he aims at the enemy to release Despair, dealing up to 84% physical damage to two random enemies, again with 33% chance to apply Taunt. Um, so a useful ability, but it doesn't target um, as many people as the first, or as many units as the first. So this uh, targets four, this targets uh, two, um, and not dealing um, a reasonable amount of damage, unfortunately, it is only 84% for this one. The next ability, um, after Solomon deals damage for every target he applies Taunt, he restores 5% of his own HP, which works very well with his exclusive runes, and we'll get into those in just a second. Um, but here, uh, yeah, so he gets to apply uh, or he gets health restoration based on the amount of taunts he gets. Again, if this was a higher chance than 33%, um, it would be a very effective ability. And finally, Root of Decay. Uh, when Solomon receives active healing, all allies are healed for 20% of this instance of healing. So the main objective for Solomon um, is really to get as much active healing uh, on him as possible. Now passive healing and active healing, there are two different um, types of healing. Uh, active healing is where a unit takes action um, and actively heals. So units like Persephone, Seraphina, uh, Ashlyn, uh, to name a couple. So if they were to actively heal, um, Solomon would then um, pass on. Uh, healing as well uh, to all allies uh, it's a very effective ability um, if your team has a lot of health or you're getting hit quite a lot um, and then the the two abilities on here um, are the the ability on here every one percent increase in Solomon's dodge additionally increases attack by two percent which adds into the um, striker synergy as well so for his talents I currently have him at epic I don't have him at legendary uh, but he does increase his dodge chance and cure rate by 15% respectively and if you have him at legendary talents he'll increase his dodge by 30% and cure rate by 30% as well uh, and for his runes I've gone all dodge as you can see I've got um, two uh, of his exclusive runes but I don't have uh, all four. His passive is when he uh, receives uh, active healing, he restores 20% of the healing amount to all allies. Uh, and then if you have his legendary red runes, um, he receives uh, he increases that amount to 60%. Um, so effectively double healing the team and can work very well in the striker's build. And I'll show you that uh, in some gameplay in a little bit. So those are his abilities. Um, he is a pretty average unit altogether. He doesn't do too much um, attack-wise. 
uh, but he does link up quite well in the Avengers team and I use him very frequently on the Shadow Arcs as well. So if you bear with me, I'm just going to jump into some gameplay for him. Okay, so we're here in the Lost City at floor 253, so a respectable um, number, and then we're going to build uh, an Avengers team. So the Avengers team that I would typically use uh, for this stage would not include Solomon, but uh, just for this instance we're going to choose Selene, Solomon, uh, we will choose Persephone, um, Atropolis, and then... Uh, if we go for Albert as well, and the reason that in the reason that I've gone for this setup is all of these units are very accessible. Um, so Albert, Solomon, Atropos, Persephone, and Selene, they're uh, all relatively free-to-play units, uh, very accessible. And we'll go with Healing Vase. We'll go with uh, Blades of Chaos, and I'll go with uh, the Hand of Tear as well. Um, so, we're going to be receiving a fair amount of healing um, from both Atropos and Persephone as well. Um, so we should see uh, quite a large increase in attack, uh, especially with the Striker synergy underlying as well. This is um, nearly a full Avengers team, so we will jump in and just see how the team does. So as you can see here, I've got that full dodge build for Solomon, uh, as well as uh, Selene, um, to increase their attack as much as possible um, because of the passive ability, and also um, it gives that holy shield uh, at the start, so a lot of protection for our front units because the front units primarily will take the biggest hits, or the, uh, the most hits. So we do get an increase in HP, and as you can see, Solomon receives that active healing, uh, and then he will heal the rest of the team as well. So uh, we got the two taunts off. Uh, this is for Mastima and uh, Gerald. Uh, and you can see we've uh, stalled them out so they aren't able to do any big attacks. Finally, um, on this second attack, we did get um, Dorbella here. Um, she was uh, stunned. Uh, and we'll see uh, whether or not Sullivan does come back. Remember, Sal does increase his attack now um, for each unit that does die. Uh, so hopefully when Sullivan comes back, uh, we'll be able to get some active healing. Uh, and then we'll double that active healing stack as well. So we got Fortitude, Sullivan uh, taunting uh, this Gerald again. So he's not able to do his big swing. And we're able to relatively easy, uh, easily take out the enemies here. So Solomon to do some big damage here as well. We'll get our Blades of Chaos to activate. And we'll see what sort of damage he did comparatively. So yeah, Sal did the most. Uh, excellent pairing those two. Really good combination um, because of the uh, Avengers synergy and because of the Strikers synergy as well. So Solomon did uh, in fact do a fair amount of damage. Uh, a bit more than Albert, and as we can see, Solomon did a lot of healing, um, more than Persephone um, did, uh, would you believe it, and more than Atropos did as well, so just something to, to keep in mind. And Solomon did take uh, the majority of the damage there as well. So now we'll move on to a Shadow Arcs team, which is going to be relatively the same. So we'll go to Shadow Arcs, we will take out Albert. We've got two Shadow Arcs here already. We'll go with another Avengers build. Another good partner early on, if you've got these units at uh, eight stars, would be Ellie. So Ellie is also a Shadow Arc and a Striker as well. So we'll buff Solomon up. So we've got a four Strikers build here. Uh, let's just see how this one goes. We're not going to change out Persephone um, or Selene or Atrox because this is really the team that you want to run him in. But we can also switch out Ellie for um, Mavis down here. Uh, but we'll try this one uh, because it's not going to be a full Avengers team. It will be a partial Avengers team 
um, but we will have four strikers built in as well so we do want to uh, keep increasing that attack as much as possible so as you can see reflect damage uh, kicking in here unfortunately it looks like we're just going to get taken out in one shot because we don't have a full avengers synergy um, that is unfortunate so we go to shadow arc stage again i think we're going to have to change out ellie and put in mavis and we'll do like, the old switch around so if we switch out typically i would never suggest running um Celine in any other spot but this um so we'll see we'll see how this this pans out uh, if we can get mavis to revive a couple of times i think it'll be really um be a really powerful team here so we do get the attack increase and as you can see uh kicking in right away the revive effect uh, for Mavis. So we'll see how long we can keep uh, Sal alive and we can see how long um, or how, how much damage uh, Mavis is actually going to do. As you can see here she is all out of revives so we're not going to be able to, to carry on here but we will see Solomon do his attack and we do stun or not stun but taunt Franz down in the bottom corner here. You can see the red circle going round and Sal to do some big damage Oops, sorry about that. So we see some healing here, and no taunts there, unfortunately. I think Sal is going to go down as soon as that fortitude effect wears off. So, unless they keep missing him, um, which is fine, it's fine by me. So we do see Sal go down here. A uh, bit of a shame, but is what it is. I think in order to pass this stage, we'll need a different type of team. So we can see all of them gone down. So Atrop's increasing her own attack, getting some shield. But I think we've seen all we need to. Shadow Arc stage is usually exceptionally tough. Um, so we can try this Shadow Arc team one more time, but instead of having Atrop's, uh, we'll put Shadow in here. Um, so we do have our shadow arcs. We'll switch around Solomon and Celine here. And um, we'll just see that active healing being demonstrated. So we've got shadow arcs team. Uh, increasing dodge here. And it looks like we'll have some additional targets for damage as well when these strangers do appear. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to see this Avengers slash Shadow Arcs team um, in full swing over the course of the next uh, couple of rounds. So we get the two fortitude effects here. Solomon taunting. Janet doing some relatively impactful damage. Sal not doing anywhere as much without the Atropos. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going for slow and steady wins the race here. So we did get a taunt on Marina as well. we've got that Avengers synergy so we are able to uh, to revive as well getting a lot of misses there which is very fortunate for us get full heal and Solomon getting the two taunts there Janna doing some exceptional damage uh, as well as Sal Unfortunately, Persephone down. But hopefully, we'll be able to summon enough strangers to be able to compensate for that as well. We get a taunt on the Lily and Leah, uh, who get taken out. And Holy Shield stacks are applied, increasing our survivability.
but as you can see Solomon in that tank role uh, performing very well uh, and allowing us to survive through that is a shame we didn't get the uh, the phantom synergy to trigger for Janet but it is what it is So Fran's doing too much damage there for us to, to pass. So we'll go back and we'll look for a striker's synergy. Alright, no, that's Monarch. So we'll look for this striker synergy here. And we'll take out these units and we'll just go for a full striker's build. So we can put in Catherine, Serafina, and uh, Trops here. We'll put you at the front, you over here, you get healing. Uh, and again, we've got these uh, standard relics here. Uh, never change them, typically. But we'll see how this one goes. So as you can see, we've got the full five strikers. And that will increase um, the attack of all our lives by 35% every round. Unfortunately, we do have a holy shield on, but uh, Catherine should, when she attacks... Um, she normally would take away Holy Shield because that's her um, that's her passive ability. So we'll see here, get an attack increase for everybody here. Solomon to take out some Holy Shield and taunt some other of the units like Ellie and Medusa here. So Sal to do some big damage and no stun from the Talonass here. So we get some more healing, we get some more attack increases. We do get the taunt again uh, and sell to and take out the Talonass there. <laughs> and Ellie to take out basically the entire team. She's just a very powerful unit. So looks like these two are surviving. And hopefully they can survive until Sal can uh, do his big attack no unfortunately not not enough HP on that team so not the most efficient strikers build uh, for Solomon here um, but it is what it is yeah um, he, he is a, a mid-level unit to me at best I don't think um, I would use him in any uh, late game uh, comps uh, specifically because he, he just doesn't do enough. If he had a 100% chance to taunt on his, or even a 70% chance to taunt um, on his uh, attacks, his ultimate and his passive, um, we, you know, I would I would really um, rate him much higher. But as it stands, he is good early to mid game. It's a good tank unit and can soak up a lot of damage on the uh, the Avengers team if you do need somebody to fill that slot um, but again it is down to that's a shame it is down to whether or not he uh, seems we just lose all of our buffs whenever we do um, take out a unit on that one anyway I'll, um, I'll, I'm gonna move on uh, now just because uh, he does uh, that's that's as much as I can say about Solomon. So let me know what you think uh, if you like the video uh, Please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I thank you for watching and you have a good day